assuming nothing goes horribly wrong, Plasma 6.1 is set to release in about a week. This right here is the tar date. By the time this comes out, the tar date's probably already passed. The actual release is on the 18th. Now, 6.0 has not been a perfect release. It's not been a repeat of KDE 4, but it's not been without its bugs. Some of them new, others just being discovered. And 6.1 is set to be a really, really cool release. So I thought, hey, let's go through some of the changes and just talk about what's going on. Now, massive props to Nate Graham for doing his weekly series on KDE changes. This video is made considerably easier because that exists. The first change is fairly minor, but I think it is going to be really noticeable. Right now, if you click the shutdown button, you'll see sleep hibernate, restart, shutdown, and logout. It's not an interface specific to the button you clicked. Now it's going to act more like a confirmation prompt. So if you click shutdown, you're just going to see shutdown now and cancel. I think in the long run, this is going to be a better way to do it, but it is going to take a little bit of getting used to. The second thing is fixing something that looks like a bug. If you press Alt-Tab on a desktop that has no windows open, all you see is this just empty box here. It doesn't tell you what's actually going on. Now it's going to say no open windows. Is it a big deal? Not really, but it does give you a clear indication of what's actually going on. Are you an enjoyer of desktop icons? Personally, I'm not. But if you do and you right click on your desktop, one of the options in your list is refresh desktop. This is going to be removed. Now, the option to refresh is still going to be there if you press F5, but they felt like having it in the context menu just cluttered the context menu for something that most people never actually use and something that doesn't actually work properly. Something really cool is fake session restore. Right now on Wayland, if your desktop crashes, all of the windows you had open are just gone. When you restart the desktop, you need to restart all of the windows you had individually. Now, there is a proper session restore being worked on. There is a Wayland protocol being developed. There are toolkit changes being done, but this is still a work in progress. The stopgap for that is when you restart the desktop, all the windows you had open just get reopened. And yes, you've lost your work, but at least you have your windows back. Now, someone might say, Oh, on X11, we have Session Restore working properly anyway. Kinda, there are a lot of bugs with it, a lot of applications don't behave properly, and it's kinda just a mess. The Wayland solution in the long run is gonna be better, but until then, fake Session Restore will have to do. Are you someone who is bothered when your cursor is visible when you're typing, watching a video, or other situations where you're not using your mouse? Well, there's going to be a solution for that, a new desktop effect to hide your cursor after a period of inactivity. Now, sensibly, it is going to be disabled by default just to make sure that new users aren't confused about where the cursor went, but I, for one, am absolutely going to use this. Are you someone who makes use of the legacy X11 app support, where you can pass your keys into X11 apps and have global shortcuts working? Well, there is going to be an addition to what this lets you do, allowing mouse button events to also be sent in. Now, I don't know what context you would want that to happen, but for whatever reason, if you want that, it is now going to be supported. Now onto a bug. If you try to make use of the desktop cube effect and you have less than three virtual desktop setup, the minimum to make use of the desktop cube, it is now not going to silently fail. Instead, it's going to call you a moron and tell you that you don't have enough virtual desktop setup. This is one of the issues I ran into in my KDE stream, and I think this is a great change. Now, how do you feel about multiple monitors? In my case, I make use of three of them. Now, there is an issue when you're trying to do things at the edge of your screen. There's no virtual border between your screens. If a window goes slightly too far, it's already on the second screen. What if there was a way to have a virtual barrier, a padding between the monitors to make hitting the edge considerably easier? Well, now there is going to be. This might be a change you just simply don't care about, but I do think having the option there is a nice thing to have. Also note, this is going to be Wayland only. Another change is going to be to the list of default desktop effects. 
One of them changing is Shake Cursor. By default right now, it is disabled by default. What this does is when you shake the cursor, it makes the cursor bigger. This is very much an accessibility feature. It makes finding your cursor on a 4K screen considerably easier, especially when you haven't set up scaling yet. And going forward, that is going to be enabled by default. I do think this makes sense as an accessibility feature and for those 4K screens, but I do expect downstream distros to end up disabling this by default again. Here is another bug fix. Direct scan out is going to work for rotated displays. Need I say more? Are you an RGB enjoyer? Do you like all of your colors matching? Well, there is now going to be the option to sync your accent color in KDE with the color on your keyboard. I have an RGB keyboard here. I have it set to one of the default settings. I never change it, but if you do like changing it, hey, there you go. Keep in mind, this is going to be very, very keyboard dependent. Some of them work great, others don't at all, so don't expect everything to be perfect here. Are you a gamer? Have you noticed that on Wayland, sometimes your mouse behaves really weirdly, like you'll click a bunch and suddenly be facing a completely different direction, or you'll try to change your camera position and it feels like you're at 100,000 DPI. These are known about and should be fixed in 6.1. This does say 6.03 here, but people were testing things, and in that version, it still seemed to be a little bit buggy, but trying out the 6.1 version, it seems like it's good. This one has a lot of moving parts. Modifier only shortcuts. What I mean is, when you press a key like the meta key, this is a shortcut to open up your menu down here. I've disabled it because I don't like it. Now you are going to be able to easily rebind these, which is good because it'll mean that I just unbind it. Obviously for other people, you might have different things you want to do with your modifier only shortcuts, but for me, I'm just not a fan of them. This one you've probably already heard about, whether it be from my video or the articles out there or anything else, but explicit sync in the desktop. NVIDIA has support for the Wayland solution in the NVIDIA 555 drivers. All we were waiting on was desktop support and NVIDIA on Wayland is, I'm not gonna say perfect, but is going to be mostly good. There's probably still other issues that need to be dealt with, but at least your desktop is not going to be flickering. Now, some people might already be using explicit sync because some distros are backporting the patch, but 6.1 is when everybody's going to have it. Did you know that in the window overview, if you middle click on one of these desktops, it will delete it? I didn't know that. And it deletes it without any sort of confirmation. Going forward, that is no longer going to happen. Now, I don't think they should just get rid of the middle click deletion. There probably should be some sort of confirmation prompt, but the argument for removing it is there is already this delete button in the corner anyway, so it feels kind of redundant. Speaking of deletions, are you a user of a fingerprint scanner? Well, there was a button to delete all of your saved fingerprints. That button is now going to be removed. I don't think it should be. I think this is another situation where it should just be behind a confirmation prompt. The reason why they're removing it is because they don't have a confirmation prompt if you accidentally click this button, all of your saved fingerprints will just be deleted and you can have 10 saved fingerprints. I get it, right? I get why they want to remove it, but the prompt just makes way more sense to me. Another minor change, but somebody realized that setting the time on the nightlight with an input field is bad and there's probably a better way to set a time. Now... It's going to work like this. So you have two separate fields, one for the hour, one for the minute, and there's also a button there to increment the number. Setting a global theme is going to have a more refined interface. As you go and enable the individual parts of your global theme, it's going to give you a clear indication of exactly what is going to be changing. Is this going to resolve the issue that happened with global themes before? No, because that was due to a bug in the way the global theme was written. But at least when you are dealing with global themes, it's a lot more clear that 
it's not just a theme. I haven't really encountered this one myself, but apparently in Chromium-based browsers, if you drag and drop a file into it, it might just crash or just completely freeze. That's a problem. That problem shouldn't happen anymore. Support for triple buffering. So normally with VSync, you have the frame being shown and the frame waiting to be shown. With triple buffering, you have the frame being shown and then two spots for frames waiting to be shown. This allows for potentially more consistent frame timing, potentially smoother experiences, and overall is just a better way to do things. It might be completely unnoticeable to you, it might be a massive improvement, but it is nice to have there in the cases where it is going to be a big change. I have talked a lot about global shortcut support and especially the portal to make it possible with native Wayland apps. And finally, somebody is actually implementing the portal. So now hopefully applications will try to use the portal. We're still going to wait a while, but at least somebody's taken the first step. Now, I've talked about this in great detail in a recent video, but we are also getting the improved desktop edit mode. I think ultimately it is a big improvement. I think there is still a lot of work that could be done with it, but is much, much better than what we have. Are you a screensaver enjoyer? Well, screensaver is not going to be directly supported, but there is going to be a fairly good approximation. What you're going to be able to do is have your lock screen automatically unlock without needing to enter a password. This is better than nothing. Are you not an enjoyer of really annoying system sounds that were made 30 plus years ago that kind of sound terrible? Well, Plasma is going to do a lot more interception of these sounds, overriding these sounds, and make them sound more pleasant. Now, I don't use the weather applet if I want to know the weather, I just open the curtain, but if you do use it, and if for whatever reason information is not currently available, it is going to tell you information is not currently available. This seems to be a common trend in 6.1. Let's stop having silent errors. Silent errors are bad. On the tiling editor, rather than using the terms vertical and horizontal split, now it says split left and right or split top and bottom. Did it need to change? Not really. There are icons here which indicate what is going to happen, but I guess it's a fine change as well. Plasma no longer dies if too many windows are open. Now, we're talking having over a hundred windows open here. I have never had this happen myself. I didn't know it happened, but it shouldn't happen anymore. Now, is there a normal situation where it is going to happen? Probably not, but it shouldn't happen nonetheless. And the very last change I want to mention, to me, is a very, very important change, and it should have never been a problem, and it should have been fixed during Plasma 5, the cache bug. Now, if you have your cache on slow storage... Plasma is not constantly trying to read and write from your cache, locking up your entire desktop if you use a desktop effect. Good job. I don't know why this ever had to happen in the first place. There was no reason to be using the cache like this. Disabling it didn't cause any problems. So that's good. This is by no means a full change log for Plasma 6.1. There is so much else changing, so many bug fixes happening, and I see why a lot of people said, hey Brody, maybe you should wait until 6.1 or 6.2 to actually use Plasma, because it looks like this release is going to be massively improving the desktop. So let me know, are you a Plasma user? Maybe you were waiting for Debian to ship Plasma 6. Maybe you're already using it and you're trying out the beta 6.1. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly verify link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Soon I'll be on Cosmic though.